Just recently, Apple released the 2018 MacBook Air. I decided to give the base model, the Core i5 version with 128GB of storage and 8GB of RAM a try. Is it worth the $1200 asking price? Let's find out. Let's first talk about the configuration options. As usual, I'm reviewing the base model, the absolute cheapest model you can purchase. This configuration comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a 1.6 GHz dual core 8th generation Core i5 8210Y processor, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, and the integrated Intel UHD Graphics 617. For this base model, you'll still be paying $1200 before tax at Apple. Upgrading the storage to 256GB, 512GB, and 1.5TB bumps the price up $200, $400, and $1200 respectively. Increasing the RAM to 16GB increases the price $200. Now we have to talk about the keyboard. This keyboard is Apple's third generation butterfly keyboard with 0.8mm of key travel that also exists in the 2018 MacBook Pros. As I've said in my previous reviews, I struggled for a year to get used to the second generation butterfly keys in the 2016 MacBook. Currently, I am jumping back and forth between the second generation keys and the third generation keys. The 2018 third generation keys are a little softer and a little quieter than the second generation keys. This is a step in the right direction, but many still prefer a larger key travel. Without going on a rant, Apple had the gold standard of keyboards before they created the butterfly keyboards in 2015. This great keyboard still exists in the 2017 MacBook Air. Then, in 2015, Apple released the MacBook. It made sense for Apple to create lower profile keys for the super slim MacBook. But why did Apple decide to include these super slim keyboards in the larger MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs? Furthermore, the keys in the first and second generation butterfly keyboards are so low profile that the keys are malfunctioning because dust and crumbs are getting stuck under each key. The good news is that the third generation butterfly keyboard included with this 2018 MacBook Air includes a silicone barrier underneath each key, which is intended to keep dust and crumbs from getting stuck under the keys. Long story short, the 2018 MacBook Air's third generation butterfly keyboard feels better and will probably last you longer than the first and second generation butterfly keyboards, but it will still take some getting used to these ultra low profile keys. I personally prefer the 2015 and 2017 MacBook Air keys. Maybe it's because after working all day at my day job on a keyboard with keys that have 1.4 millimeters of travel, the 2018 MacBook Air's 0.8 millimeters of key travel is too much of a change for me. Apple does have the gold standard in trackpads though. The large trackpad is larger than the 2015 and 2017 MacBook Airs, but smaller than the 2017 and 2018 13-inch MacBook Pros. Since the trackpad is slightly smaller than the MacBook Pro trackpads, there is less of a risk of your palms accidentally activating the trackpad while you are typing. Gestures are a joy to use, and Apple has nailed the simulated click. You can't feel a difference from a physical click except that you can click anywhere on the trackpad now just as easily as you can click on the bottom. Now let's talk about the touch bar and fingerprint sensor. I am very appreciative that the MacBook Air has physical function keys instead of a touch bar. I am also very excited that the power button also functions as a fingerprint sensor. Apple took the best features from the MacBook Pro's touch bar, the fingerprint sensor, and delivered it to the 2018 MacBook Air. To me, I like my muscle memory telling me exactly where each key is without me having to look at the keyboard. I also like bringing the cost down. Good job, Apple. Now let's talk about the ports. The 2018 MacBook Air comes with only two Thunderbolt 3 ports, both of which are full speed at 40 gigabits per second. Other than the Thunderbolt 3 ports, the only other port is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Get some dongles if you need a USB type A port and an SD card slot. Regarding the sound, the upward facing speakers sound great for such a thin laptop. The sound performs better than the 2017 MacBook Air, but worse than almost any other MacBook with upward facing speakers. For the best quality sound, use external speakers or headphones. We have to talk about the size and weight. As far as size and weight, I can hold this laptop with one hand with no problems. The 2.75 pound laptop fits easily inside a bag. It is just a hair lighter than the 2015 and 2017 MacBook Air and the 2017 and 2018 13-inch MacBook Pros. At its thickest, it is 0.61 inches, but it tapers to just 0.16 inches. All that said, the size of the laptop is large enough to multitask, but small and light enough to be very portable. Now let's talk about the screen. 
The screen inside the MacBook is a gorgeous 13.3 inch diagonal LED backlit display with IPS technology. The resolution is 2560 by 1600 or 227 pixels per inch. If you own the previous MacBook Air and the screen quality is important to you, I highly recommend you upgrade. That said though, the screen in the 2018 MacBook Air is dimmer than the screens in the 2018 MacBook Pros, but you wouldn't be able to tell a difference unless you hold them side by side. Now let's talk about the battery life. The laptop includes a 50.3 watt hour battery. Apple claims 12 hours of battery life, but realistically I stay closer to 9 hours, which is good, but the MacBook Air 2015 still beats it. Finally, when I close the lid, the laptop goes to sleep and the sleep low power mode will last for weeks. Let's talk about the RAM. At $1,300, the 2018 MacBook Air ships with 8GB of 2133 MHz DDR3 RAM, the same amount of RAM that ships with the $1,800 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro. You can pay Apple an extra $200 to upgrade to 16GB of RAM. As far as upgrading yourself, nothing is upgradable, so get what you need when you need it. Now let's talk about the processor. The 1.6 GHz dual-core 8th generation Core i5-8210Y processor turbo boosts up to 3.6 GHz. You currently don't have the opportunity to upgrade to a Core i7. The performance is where the 2018 MacBook Air starts to suffer. Apple did not include U-series Ultrabook processors in this laptop, but rather the low-power Core M it included in the fanless MacBook 2015-2017 through 2017 that Intel rebranded to the Core Y processors to boost sales. The only difference is that the 2018 MacBook Air includes a fan. As a result, the performance is subpar when compared to the 2017 MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i5-7360U dual-core processor and the 2018 MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i5-8259U quad-core processor. The Geekbench single-core score was 4163 and the multi-core score was 7746. This is slightly less than the MacBook Pro 2017 scores and pales in comparison to the 2018 MacBook Pro with quad-core processors. The good news is that since there is a fan and it's a dual-core processor, there is no thermal throttling in this processor. Let's now talk about the gaming. The MacBook Air is not meant for gaming. That said though, let's run some benchmarks and do it anyways. The integrated Intel UHD Graphics 617 runs Tomb Raider at 720p low settings with some stutter causing the minimum frames per second to drop considerably. OpenCL GPU scores from Geekbench was 2789. This is significantly less GPU performance than the 2017 MacBook Pro 13. As a result, older games run fine, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 generation games will run on low settings, but don't expect anything to play from this generation. There are tricks to get any game to run on this hardware, but you'll have to determine if tweaking a game for ultra low settings is worth it for you. All this said, the fans do kick in during gaming, but it is not loud at all though. Let's finally compare the 2018 MacBook Air against the 2017 MacBook, the 2017 MacBook Air, the 2017 MacBook Pro 13 without touch bar, and the 2018 MacBook Pro 13 with touch bar. Sadly, Apple has not released a cheaper 13-inch MacBook Pro without touch bar. The single core performance in all laptops is very similar, with the MacBook Pro 2018 inching above the rest. The 2018 MacBook Pro 13 blows away all of the laptops with a multi-core performance though. If you care about graphics, the 2017 MacBook Pro 13 seems to be the best value right now, even though the 2018 MacBook Pro 13 inches above it. Although if you really cared about gaming, you should get something with a discrete graphics card. As far as the weight, the 2018 MacBook Air is slightly lighter than the MacBook Pros and previous MacBook Airs, but it is nowhere near as light as the 2017 MacBook. That said, the MacBook and the 2017 MacBook Pro each have louder and damage-prone second-generation butterfly keys. As a result, if you want a light MacBook, you don't care about performance, the low-profile keys don't bother you, but you're nervous about keyboard longevity, and you want a Touch ID sensor, then the 2018 MacBook Air is for you. Click like if you liked this video, please subscribe if you want to see more, and check out DansBestTech.com for a full written review.